Let us now talk about the second pathway that is cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic photophosphorylation starts or involves only one photosystem. So let us first draw the flowchart, how exactly it works, and then we will write down the important things. It starts with PS1, and that is the only photosystem which is involved in this. Again, there is this reaction center chlorophyll A, and around it are these accessory pigments. And as we know in PS1, it is P700. That means this chlorophyll A absorbs 700 nanometers. This PS1 has its primary electron acceptor. Now when sunlight falls on these chlorophyll molecules, same thing, all pigments are going to absorb photons or uh, corresponding wavelengths and they pass these photons to the main chlorophyll. Once chlorophyll A on its own has absorbed sufficient photons and received photons from the accessory pigments, a pair of electrons would get excited because of that extra energy. Again, it is the sunlight that means solar energy is absorbed and this pair of electron has been accepted by the primary electron acceptor. Let us again write down the full forms, primary electron acceptor, primary electron acceptor. Now from here, this electron will move down the electron transport chain. Again, here it is at a higher energy level. When it comes down that electron transport chain, it is moving down the gradient from higher energy level to lower energy level. So when this electron passes through these acceptors, there are four acceptors. And from here, the electron, so let us write down their names. There are four electron acceptor. The first one is ferridoxin. FD stands for ferridoxin, then is PQ, that is plastoquinone, and next is cytochrome complex, CY is cytochrome complex, and the last one is PC, that is plastocyanin. Plastocyanin. That means now the electron is passing from primary electron acceptor to ferredoxin, then from ferredoxin to plastoquinone, from plastoquinone to cytochrome, and from cytochrome to plastocyanin. And from plastocyanin, this pair of electron it comes back to chlorophyll A and that is why we are using the term cyclic. So this pair of electron is now back to chlorophyll A molecule. Now, when it is passing through these electron acceptors, it releases, this pair of electron releases energy at two places. One, when it is moving from ferredoxin to plastoquinone. Here, ADP and inorganic phosphates, they are combined and ATP is synthesized. And second is when it is going through cytochrome. So here also ADP combines with inorganic phosphate and we get ATP. So in this case, there are two places where ATP is getting synthesized. So phosphorylation is for synthesis of ATP addition of phosphate. Photo because it is taking place in, uh, in presence of sunlight. And cyclic because the electron pair which leaves chlorophyll A after passing through this electron transport chain it is the same electron which is coming back to 
chlorophyll A. This was not the case in case of non-cyclic. In non-cyclic, when chlorophyll A of PS2 relieves that pair of electron, that electron never comes back to the same chlorophyll. And that is why the first pathway was called non-cyclic and this is known as cyclic pathway. As the electron pair comes back here, photolysis of water is not required. So important thing, in case of cyclic photophosphorylation, it is only PS1 which is involved. Number two important thing is there is no photolysis, no photolysis of water. The reason is the electron is getting released from chlorophyll A and the same pair is coming back to chlorophyll A. So we don't have to replace or uh, give that lost electron because it is coming back. And third important thing is that in this pathway only ATP is synthesized. There is no reducing power. So only ATP is synthesized. No reducing power. That means no NADPH or no NADPH2. As we said, for dark reaction to take place, two things are required. ATP is also required and reducing power is also required. And this pathway gives only ATP. So the predominant pathway which takes place is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. This is in less percentage, around 15 to 20 percent is this and maximum is non-cyclic. One more important thing which we need to know about this. This PS1 is not associated with the complex which helps in photolysis of water and this is present in stroma lamellae. In case of non-cyclic we said that non-cyclic photophosphorylation takes place in thylakoid membrane because in thylakoid membrane PS2 and PS1 both are present. And that is why both can participate in the pathway. In case of stroma lamellae, it is only PS1 which is present. And PS1 is not associated with the oxygen dissociation, oh sorry, water dissociation complex. So PS1 is not associated with oxygen. Photolysis complex. That means the complex which is going to help in photolysis is not associated with PS1. If you are able to recall the previous pathway which we talked of, that is non cyclic, it started with PS2 and PS2 was associated with photolysis complex, and that is why. Water splits there, the electron pair which is released is given to that reaction center chlorophyll. So this is cyclic photophosphorylation gives us only ATP, no reducing power. And PS1 is associated with stroma lamellae. So this pathway predominantly takes place in the membrane of stroma lamellae. Now we will compare the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation to understand how these two processes are different.